Looking like patriarchy, like scrubbing blood off the ceiling and bleach and another carpet. How my house can on it? My toy and body awesome. don't We're gonna get started in just a minute. There's still people just coming in. I know I dream all black. I seen that everything immortalizing tweets all caps. Uh, they said they found her dead. One girl and this girl man from Phoenix uh, is interested in abolition because people should be free to live their lives, period. This is their third or fourth meeting. I guess the ego hurt now. It's time to go to work. Wow, look at him go. He really doubts to write about me when the world is in smokes, when it's people in trees, when George was begging for his mother saying he couldn't breathe. He thought to write about me. One girl missing, another one go missing. One girl missing, another one. Yo, Central Phoenix, this is their second meeting. Just want to continue to learn more in depth about abolition so that one day uh, be able to help them. That's why it's so important. This is a new world order. We democratize the Amazon, we burn down borders. This is a new vanguard. This is a new vanguard. I'm the new vanguard. All right. And with that, let's go ahead and get started for today. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sean. I'm with MassLib. My pronouns are them, they. And um, today, I'm excited to be the um, one of the facilitators for Let's Talk Abolition Part 2. So I want to explain just a few things before we get started here. Um, first, the chat feature is something we should all get familiar with. Um, if you are on a uh, laptop, then it will be on your left hand side. Um, if you're, oh, I'm sorry, on your right hand side, this is my right, um, it'll be on your right hand side. Um, if you're on a phone, you should be able to tap the screen and a um, toolbar will show up and you can hit chat. So in the chat, um, you can type and you can also send messages to individual people. If you click the little drop down menu um, at the top of the chat feature. Um, you also should have reactions. Reactions should be on your toolbar. If you click reactions, you will see you get a hand clap and you get a thumbs up. And uh, the last thing, um, you also might have uh, a raising your hand feature, um, which we will use um, later tonight. So take this time just to check to see if you have those if you can access them or use them if you need to type something in the chat just to test it that's totally fine cool and then um, if you click participants you should see your name right if you click uh, the drop down menu next to your name it should say more and then you'll see rename um, Take this time to update your name with your pronouns. Also, if you are here as a part of any organization, you can also put that organization in your name. So for instance, my name is on Zoom is Sean, parentheses, they, them, those are my pronouns. And then next to that is MassLibAZ. Doing this will make it easier for us when we're in breakout and when we're having discussion so that we know everyone's pronouns, that everyone is gendered correctly. We want to make sure this is a, a safe place for um, folks who identify with all sorts of gender identities. Uh, as I said earlier, um, if you can turn on your video, that'd be great. We would love to see you. If not, we understand. Of course, your privacy is very, very important. It just helps us create a little bit more of a in-person feeling when we are talking to faces. 
Cool. I think that is all I have right now. Uh, I just want to say in closing that remember this is an interactive meeting. We want to hear your ideas and your questions. That's how we all grow and deepen our analysis. So make sure you share your thoughts in the chat and in breakout rooms, you'll have plenty of time to talk. Thank you for being here to build with us. Now I'd like to introduce Ms. Roslyn, another MassLib organizer. Ms. Roz is a healer, a pillar in our community, and has a very grounding presence in this abolition movement. Uh, Ms. Roz, will you say hi and share a little bit about MassLib's history? Thank you, Sean, for uh, introducing me. And I just want to say greetings and welcome to all. We're so excited about the many faces that have joined us this evening. And I am so excited to be here. So I say good evening and thank you for showing up. And I'd just like to share a little bit about how Mass Lib AZ came to be. Um, Mass Liberation officially kicked off our work to free our people in South Phoenix during the fall of 2018. Um, we're a group of folk uh, who are directly and indirectly impacted by the violence of policing and the carceral system. Our early community forums, Let's Talk and Speak Freedom, were an invitation to other community members to come together in principled struggle and build power to transform the violent, oppressive system and to heal our communities. Uh, a core group of dedicated volunteers emerged and Together, we developed our 10 guiding values. Um, these uh, values uh, are so important to us, and that's how this movement was created. Everyday folks coming together to disrupt and dismantle the system of punishment uh, that insists on harming us. We are organizing out of South Phoenix because we always center the leadership of directly uh, impacted people. And um, unfortunately, South Phoenix is one of the most heavily policed, incarcerated, and parole communities. And uh, Arizona is listed as the fifth highest incarcerator in the nation. And disproportionate numbers are coming out of South Phoenix. That's our community. And tonight, you'll hear from us why this is happening and what we can do about it. And Thanks again for being here with us, and we hold you in honor. And now I will pass it over to, um, I'm so sorry, I, I will pass it over to, she's another one of our organizers. And Talima is a poet, an activist, and a community stakeholder. On to you, Talima. What's up, y'all? Peace, yeah. peace. Thank you, Miss Roslyn. I'm really happy to be here, especially with everybody, um, all these beautiful folks in the room. What's up, Selena, Anisha, Dana, everybody that was with me on the uh, phone bank, and I see y'all representing. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, it just, you know, when we all come together, hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? <laughs> Um, but you know, this this community, we've built a power and we're here to build power to dismantle oppressive systems. And I'm so glad that you guys are here with us. That's right, right, Mr. Roz? That's where we at, huh? <laughs> so I just want to know really quick before I start, um, did everybody answer the poll? Um, we want to make sure that you understand or, or you know, are answering the question in the poll of, um, are you an abolitionist? Yes. No, you're not sure. Any answer is the right answer. You know, we're here to learn. So just, you know, be honest with yourself there. Um, get your votes in real quick while we can. Okay. So I think Rhea, can you show us how the poll went? Um, yeah. We can go out here at the end of the night. Yeah, let's give it a little bit more time. There's like 76% of people have voted. So if you guys could just get your votes in really quickly. Please and thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, basically, you guys know that we are here um, because we want to see at the end of the night, you know, after our time together and everything, if perception shifts. So if we can get that answered now, that'd be great. Um, and just so that you know, this is exactly how we define 
abolition. Abolition is eliminating mm -hmm. the false belief that police and prisons are necessary, knowing that caging people is never the solution to harm or a sign of justice. Um, we also believe that all prisons, detention centers, and jails should be abolished, and we must invest in solutions that strengthen our communities. Thank you, Ms. Roslyn, for giving us some uh, backstory on Mass Live, and thank you, Talima, for defining abolition. Um, I'm wondering how that definition is landing for folks, how we're feeling about that. So if you could share in the chat if you agree with this vision of abolition, or if there's some points that are sticking out that you're unsure about, or really any questions or comments that you may have, or, or things you might want to add to this definition of abolition. We can take that time right now to put that in the chat. Lily and Vanessa say agree in all caps. Thank you for the enthusiasm. Got a lot of agrees. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, Hannah, Robert. Oh yes, lots of agrees coming in. Someone's, Hannah says, it's a beautiful vision here to fight for it. Thank you. The, uh, Liz says freeing and investing in solutions and strengthening communities, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So mm -hmm. that's what's all up. Leora um, says, I feel fully on board with the definition, but I realize as a privileged white person, I have a lot of deprogramming to do. Yes. Um, thank you for owning you. the work. Um, and <laughs> I also want to say that um, we definitely all do have work to do. Um, some more than others or some in different ways than others, right? Um, the way that privilege may or may not uh, land on your body. So thank you for sharing that. And Christina, she had put in the chat that, you know, she's down for abolition, but she still has questions. So she put uncertain, which is absolutely okay. Cause again, we're here to learn. So that is perfectly fine. Carrie puts a good question in here. What are the models for alternative systems of public safety? That's a great question. And we're actually working on that organization to organization. Um, but that is definitely something that we can kick around today, I'm sure, in the breakout sessions. And next month, when we have our Let's Build workshop, we'll definitely talk more about that. That's right. And then Allison says, she has a question, what, what does it look like to live this out in daily practice? And that's exactly why we have these, um, you know, these meetings and these sessions with you guys is so that we can kick those ideas around and see what exactly that would be and kind of work that out and implement that for ourselves. So that's some really good stuff that you guys are throwing in the chat. I really appreciate all these questions and responses. A lot of people are saying that they are having a hard time seeing the practicality of this or seeing a world in which prisons and police actually do not exist. Um, and that's, you know, very, very valid. Um, I do want to say that um, in the grand scheme of um, human society, the concept of police and prisons is relatively new. Um, it's only been around, uh, um, I say, 300, 400 years, um, which, okay, obviously that's century, right? Um, but we think about human society as a toll. That means that um, there were numerous civilizations and people that were living without police and without prisons. Um, so it definitely is possible. And I also want to say um, that mass incarceration specifically um, is a not just a prison system, right, but is a system that is designed to disproportionately target certain people and extract them from the community, uh, extract labor, um, and punish them for existing. Awesome. We have a lot of uh, chat responses. So thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to move on for now. Um, Melon, I see your private message to me right now. I will respond to that as soon as I get um, some time. Thank you for that. All right. 
So um, now let's talk about our 10 values that uh, guide the work we do um, that Ms. Roz mentioned earlier. All right, so we see all 10 here. Um, Ms. Roz, would you mind starting us off with our um, first value? I'm so sorry I wasn't uh, uh, unmuted, but our first value is love and rigor. And like I said, we worked together for more than a year to determine the values that ground us in the spirit of abolition. So our first value is love and rigor. We know it takes all of us to change the system and we won't always agree on everything. Because of love for the community and each other, we work through challenges instead of walking away. Thanks, Ms. Roz. Um, and so the second value is we center black liberation. And we censor black liberation despite the fact that poor uh, or brown and poor people get caught up in the system. It's designed to target and oppress black people. We believe that by liberating black people, we all get free. And so if you can really uh, do us a favor, why would you think that this is a key value? Can you drop a couple responses in the chat, maybe a sentence, maybe a word or two, um, and just so that we can kind of see, you know, what you what your feelings are about these values so we have kai saying no one's free until the most oppressed are free which is what we agree with completely angela agrees with carrie this is spot on it's designed for capitalism anisha supports this 100 percent, which is great sean you want to get us to the next value yes um, our next value is the system isn't broken. It was designed this way. So as I was um, saying earlier about mass incarceration, uh, this system is designed to exploit black, brown, indigenous, and poor people. We don't believe the system as we know it can be reformed or fixed. Um, my question to you all is, in what ways do we see this value operating today? In what ways do we see the system operating exactly how it is designed to. Walking while black. Says mm. Mm. Really? Desegregation, yes, for sure, because it's happening again. <laughs> uh, history of policing. Thousands of people sitting in jails because they can't afford bail. Yes. And I forgot, I forgot to say, this is Lily, Angela, Hannah, and Grace. Eva says no public accountability for police. Laura says disappropriate incarceration of black people. Oh, wow, there's a lot to say. That chat is blowing up. <laughs> yeah, Alana says profit off prisons. Cece says housing injustices. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna move on now. Um, but thank you all for um, the overwhelming response to that. <laughs> Yes, and our next value is all of us or none of us. Liberation for one person at the expense of another is not liberation at all. We seek liberation for all people, regardless of our differences. We do not discriminate, and it shows tonight by all you showing up in solidarity. And again, we say thank you, all of us or none of us. And so justice reinvestment, uh, it's the money that currently goes into caging people should go into actually strengthening communities as opposed to people. Um, and so when we think about this value, what can we invest these funds in instead of policing in prisons? Can you drop a couple of maybe sentences, one words, oh, mental health services, CC, let's go. Any other education, housing? 
Oh my gosh, it's going so fast. I can't even see the my screen. <laughs> Libraries, the arts, homelessness, reparations. Oh gosh, it is like popping. You guys are amazing. Thank you for coming with these responses because they all drug abuse. And when we're dealing with addictions in our community, that is so real because addictions are not just drugs. I would like to mention that. Um, and, and yeah, so let's go. Let's, let's, let's get into the next value. <laughs> I'm loving this energy right now. Um, I do. So the next value, um, there is a difference between crime and harm. So crime is defined by people with power, aka the state, often to preserve that power. It has no connection to what actually happens. So I want to ask a question about this one too. And thank you everyone for being so responsive in the chat. Even if you to read it out loud know that um, it is being held and received in the space. Um, but my question around the difference between crime and harm is, uh, what does this value mean to you and how would you describe the difference? And let's, if you don't know the difference, then that's fine too, that's why we're here. But if, if, you, if you can differentiate, we would really like to see that in the chat. Mm, Maylee says crime demands punishment. Yikes. Yeah. yeah, there's no punishment if there's no crime. So crime has to be defined. Crime is something the system defines. Crime is something the system defines. Harm is human, says uh, Christina. Grace says, punishment for crime does not address why the crime happened in the first place. Jonathan makes a very good point. Damage to property is crime, but not genuine harm to a community. Man, not always. Selena, crime is against property, harm is against people. Mm -hmm. Lots of connections to property here with crime. Lots of connections. Oh, Allison makes a good point. Oh, I lost it. Um, threatens, uh, crime threatens systems of capitalism. Harm threatens communities. Mm. Cool. Thank you for these responses again. Um, Vaz, can you go to the next value? I sure can. People over property. We prioritize humanity over profit and property. And for more on this value, join our beloved Joe Latios and crew next Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can sign up on Facebook and we'll share the link at the end of the night. All right, so we're on our eighth value where we focus on healing and personal transformation. We seek to dismantle the current system of punishment and retribution and focus on personal growth and healing. And we just really want to know why you think this value is important. Okay, we've got a good conversation going on in the chat. If we can kind of like refocus on the chat and see why we would want to focus on healing and personal transformation, why would mass liberation hold this value so dear? Christina says healing oneself is required to heal others in the community, which is true, right? You gotta, you gotta work on yourself. Um, it helps to find solutions outside of punishment. Uh, Oh my gosh, they're going so fast. Healing and growth will ultimately, I lost it. <laughs> it was going so fast. Uh, healing and growth will ultimately prevent further harm or future harm. Thank you, Sean. It's reformative and transformative, restorative and transformative, which is very true. They do. Sometimes people do get stagnant 
um, healing is a process, right? And if we don't have help with that, sometimes we can't get through that properly. Respect is always good. <laughs> and so we want to take it to the last value or the, sorry, second to last value, Sean? Yes. Um, we center the leadership of directly impacted people. The people closest to the problem are the people closest to the solution. And I believe for this last one, it is you, Ms. Oslin. Oh, yeah. Um, our next value is putting people in cages is never, never, ever the answer. And um, we just want to thank everyone for sharing your thoughts in our chat tonight and uh, responding to our values. And now we're going to move into our breakout rooms so we can have a deeper discussion together. Yes, so I'm gonna explain that just a little bit. Um, so the breakout rooms are a place where we will discuss three of our 10 mass lib values. We are only doing three because we were really all of these uh, deserve a full robust hour plus long conversation. Um, but for the sake of today in our breakouts, we're gonna discuss three. That's um, one in each breakout, right? So we're gonna ground ourselves in, our, in, the his, in history and experience of our value as it pertains to us and how we interpret it. Um, then we'll share our understanding of this value, right? And then your group will identify one person to report back. And so when we join the main room again, that person will share what they talked about. Our facilitators for tonight are going to be Gabe, Miss Rosalind, Talima, Maddie, Kaylin, Ria, Nicole, and Jamar. And actually, I believe it is me instead of Ria. I apologize, Ria, that's not your job tonight. Um, can our facilitators take their um, mics off mute real quick and just say hi? Hello. Hello. Hey there. Hi, hi everyone. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Okay, so um, the system isn't broken. It was designed this way. That will be led by Gabe and myself, I believe. Putting people in cages is never, never, never the answer is um, Miss Rosalind, Kaylin, and Maddie, and we sent mm -hmm. you a It's going to be Nicole and Jamar. Um, while we get those um, set up, I think Talima is going to share a little mic. I'm really excited about that. Are you ready, Talima? All right, the floor is all yours. Ah, <sighs> deep breath. <laughs> I just want to say really quickly before I start that uh, we respect everyone that's here. We appreciate all thoughts and perspectives. This is how we build a better future for ourselves when we have um, critical critique, right? And so, yeah, let's just, it's community, y'all, it's community. <laughs> And so I want to um, spit two pieces that I wrote myself. So here we go. Black love, black power, no ropes. Brown gaze, sun rays, no boats. Red skin, divine feminine, no government, white rage, black magic, some hope. Children smiles, turnstiles, no dope. Broken hydrants, teenage bras, graffiti walls, no sovereignty, people die, bodies float. We try to mourn, but we can't up in smoke. Black love, black power, no ropes. Brown gaze, sun rays, no boats. Red skin, divine feminine, no government. White rage, ma black magic, some hope. Music's playing, body swaying, let's get close. Unification of our nation due to desperation, you know? Hollow hearts play their parts, thoughts and hoes. Double Dutch, candy crush, that's all they know. Brown stone stoops, handball courts, school of old. Where I'm from, the Bronx house, take your soul. Mind your manners, go bananas like you're told. Children's smiles, turnstiles, no dope. Broken hydrants, teenage brawls, graffiti walls, no sovereignty, people die, bodies float. We try to mourn, but we can't up and smoke. She's the revolution, no TV, play your role. Woke minds, off your behinds, take control. The time is now, activate, let's go. Daddy at the head, family fall in line, let's grow. Black love, black power, no ropes. Brown gaze, sun rays, no boats. Red skin, divine feminine, no government. White rage, black magic, some hope. 
Let's go. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one. Um, the second one I've done before. Um, so some have probably heard me do this before, but this is one of my favorite ones. So we're going to go ahead and rock with it again. You feel me? All right. Café, café con leche. Café, café, café. Café, café con leche. Café, café, café. Café, café con leche. Café, café, café. The next time someone tells me that I'm yellow, I will say yes. Yes, I am because my ancestors were raped over and over again until my black skin couldn't protect the light inside and I became yellow like the morning sun bright. And you can't help but to see it. You want to feel it just to see if my fibers hold tight to its original threads. The Congo, Cameroon, Iberian Peninsula, the Tainos. You know you love an exotic mixture of pain and suffering, resilience and magnificence, traditions and blended cultures. These elites are flocking over my island like vultures, waiting to bleed like Carolina y La Perla. Black skins are turning into bright yellow canvases, and I, I'm one of them. Hey. Hey, baby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we ready for these breakouts, y'all? <laughs> yep. So when you get the for everybody just hit yes and then you will be ready to go to Lima thanks for taking us out like that and yeah. hey Katie. Have fun in your break. I'll see you all back in 30 minutes. Hi, Malik. Did you get an invitation to join a breakout room? Hi, Malik. Can you hear me? Do you want to join a breakout group? You're on mute. Can you type in the chat chat? All righty. So Claudio, if you accept your invitation, you can move into a breakout group. and the poll is closed. It was also now viewing. So I'll reread the question. Did you know that if you vibed with the value you were assigned, you might be an abolitionist? 55 of us said yes, uh, which is 82% of us. Uh, two of us said I had no idea, just 3% of us, and 10 of us said, hmm, kind of. Fair, totally, totally fair. Um, great. So now we're going to um, do a large group share back of all the things we discussed in our breakouts. Um, 
you see on your screen here that we are taking notes on these in real time. Um, we're doing that so that folks will be able to see what has already been said. And so they don't need to repeat um, anything that another group has already said. Um, we're going to have Gabe's group first. So whoever is um, sharing back from Gabe's group, the floor is now yours. Hey, that's me. Um, so you said a lot of really awesome things. Um, we talked about how um, community is central to abolition work. Oh, and our principle was uh, the system isn't broken, it's designed this way. Um, so community being central to abolition work and how we have to form communities outside of like oppressive systems of power. Um, and how can we create a world that grants us our like humanity as people? Gabe asked that question. Um, someone in our group, DC, talked about how um, the way we frame these conversations really has power. So framing the, the question of the system being broken and saying that it's broken takes away from, from our like analysis of actually saying, no, it's designed this way. Um, and Eva Jane built on that by saying that when we say that the system is broken, it sort of implies that we need to focus our energy on fixing it. But um, when we frame it as the system is designed this way, then we can focus our energy on, um, on community needs and rebuilding from the ground up. Um, Hannah talked about um, how we need to know about the larger context of the carceral state and how it fits into the structure of the US. And so abolition goes way beyond just prisons and police. Um, Aaron talked about small reforms of who is in power and what people look like in power is sort of a distraction tactic from questioning how power is consolidated and how um, systems are constructed and how they maintain power. Um, and Gabe talked about how abolition allows us to be the architects of new systems of power. And then we talked about accountability in your community and Halisi talked about you need to be accountable to your community, which means trusting them um, to hold you accountable and letting go of our senses of individualism. And Gregory talked about how individual communities can address harms through the relationships that they build among themselves. Um, and that building relationships is really important because being in community means harming your community members because um, that's just the nature of people that we sometimes do wrong to each other. And so Gabe was questioning, how can we build models of accountability that are not based on carceral models? Um, and then Halisi said that means that we need to question what justice looks like both on a community level and individual level um, and think about how can communities uh, build accountability and justice, and then how can we find justice for ourselves? Awesome, thank you, Grace. Um, next, uh, on the same value, different group, same value, is gonna be the group that I was in with Talima. Um, is our share back person ready? Me. I'm Zerawaya. Um, so first we have the question, why is this important to understand? We talked about understanding that it's not something that just happened, it's very intentional. Um, and understanding that at face value is very powerful. Um, we also talked about what the previous group talked about um, in terms of fixing it, but the system doesn't need to be fixed, it needs to be completely dismantled. Um, we talked about criminalizing poverty and um, then we were asked, what else does the system do? And so um, we talked about healthcare also being a barrier. We talked about the courtroom structure, um, even the system in terms of lease and being able to read lease and what that. We talked about school funding being based on taxes and how um, our black and brown and indigenous schools um, well, black and brown schools are over, they have a higher number of SROs or school resource officers. Um, we talked about, uh, again, the criminalization of 
poverty, but also the feminization of property of poverty, um, and who is most affected by poverty. And more often than not, we see Black, Brown, and Indigenous women being the face of poverty at that point. Um, after that, we were really asked about what is our utopia or what is our dream space. And so we had an officer in there who said that he prayed for the day that uh, we will not need jails or prisons. Um, we talked about having mental health professionals in schools and talked about the re-traumatization of our children, especially in light of all of these videos coming out on the internet and not even being able to surveil our children on their phone uh, watching these videos. Um, we talked about different policies in schools that um, promote trauma and lead traumatization of our children in schools. Um, we talked about representation, so um, making sure that all the people in power are not white <laughs> and um, making sure that we have that representation. Um, more diversity in our methods of how we're dealing with things, how um, if there's an issue, we don't take away someone's food. We talk through it instead. So there needs to be different methods of um, dealing with situations. The system, um, we talked about the system being designed to keep us separate. Um, another utopia was community schools where all decisions are made by the community for the community, including education. Um, and then a school where breakfast and lunch are from the community farm, which I thought was amazing. Uh, we talked about domestic violence and doing more like primary position, uh, prevention. So like education um, surrounding what a, a healthy relationship looks like or um, de-escalation methods, just something that isn't like tertiary prevention or just at the last minute needing those uh, prevention methods. Um, we also talked about promoting not only diversity, but also inclusion. Really in any space, when you go into the workforce after school, when you're in school, so on and so forth in any space, um, fine arts being allowed. So they gave examples of like ballet and playing instruments for our children and it costing so much money. So there's a barrier there as well. Um, internet for all, which as we know now is so important uh, for our kids and for everyone trying to function at home virtually. And then finally parents being heard and believed when they bring issues to the table about their children or themselves. Thank you so much for that um, report back. Um, I just would like to remind folks to please try and keep our report backs um, to three minutes. Um, I know I did not say that at the top, right? So for the two folks that have already reported back, don't worry, it's not um, your fault at all. Uh, I should have said that earlier. but. From here on out, please remember to um, try and keep your report backs down to three minutes. Um, cool. Next, we're going to hear from the two groups that had Centering Black Liberation. So we're going to go ahead and hear from Jamar's group, whoever is reporting back. That's me. Hello. Uh, so uh, we were Centering Black Liberation. And uh, right out um, at the start, uh, Jamar made a really great point of how when we say centering black liberation, just even the word black alone becomes almost divisive and people start to try to break down the marginalized groups. Um, and then he talked about that, um, the truth is that this is uh, the, the closest point to inclusive that we have currently, that we're working towards um, for creating. Oh, sorry. Can you hold on for me one second? Go back to the word being black. I'm sorry. Um, no it's just, worries. So the word black is what? Um, so the the use of the word black is divisive. I'll I'll try not to speak too quickly for you. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, in the sense that uh, people will use it as a tactic to talk about other marginalized groups. Whereas, 
by centering black liberation, it actually includes all of all communities that would be closest to um, the point of centering the black liberation. Um, the system is designed to oppress black people specifically. And that's why when we use that word intentionally, it will actually become inclusive for all who are marginalized. Um, he also gave us um, a series of um, history notes, um, just really quick and brief, that when you're going up against somebody who is not wanting to center Black liberation, you can see how it's in the foundations historically from as early as the 1600s in the system supporting wealth. Uh, and then towards the foundations of policing of slaves in the 1700s to how the 13th Amendment comes around and labels crime, which replaces slavery. And then he even brought it up to now where prison labor is used just as slavery was used prior to the 13th Amendment, uh, specifically talking about Hickman Farms here locally. Uh, and then hold so, on, hold on, I'm sorry, what, what local person? Uh, Hickman Farms. And then the rest of our discussion was uh, a group conversation around um, how do we personally live with the value um, and what does the movement mean? Um, and Hannah, Hannah mentioned that um, thinking about it uh, from an inclusive mindset uh, helps to set liberation towards centering black folks. Um, we live in an individual centered society, therefore hearing black liberation uh, means a community and is encompassing of all. Uh, Jess mentioned following black leadership um, and listening to what um, black led organizations are telling us to do uh, coming from the white perspective as you know, people using their bodies at rallies or at um, black led organization um, uh, groups in general. And then uh, Melvin talked about how we need to work together uh, to finding common ground, um, that we need to better understand each other and without having spaces where we can have conversations, um, we live in a place of chaos and madness. Um, Kai mentioned black liberation is decolonization. Um, the oppressed become the oppressor mentality. Um, we talked a little bit there from there about haves versus have nots and how, again, using, it's very purposeful to use centering black liberation when people get perhaps um, scared off by the word black, they may be somebody who's in the haves and is worried that by centering black liberation, they become have nots, which isn't the truth. Um, so um, being able to separate, and there were a few um, examples given. Oh, I've gone way too long, but there were a few examples given on that as well. So. Apologies, I spoke fast. Thank you, Talima. Thank you, Karen, for that. Um, <clears throat> from Nicole's group, do we have a shareback person? Hi, that was me. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, so why we center Black liberation? A lot of uh, things similar to the last group. Um, the center of American history uh, is based on that whiteness and Blackness. And to paraphrase, anti-Blackness is the knot that holds together everything oppressive. Um, also how in history, society is built on the profit off of and control of Black bodies. Um, mention of white feminism in history focusing some people and 
Kelly, you're cutting in and out. Can and, you? Um, um, many others. Um, other participants that are hand we want it back. And similar to the last group, um, noticing when we center uh, um, Black women in Black liberation, uh, similar to another massive value that the affected. Sorry, my internet. Um, can you drop in the chat, Nicole, your points on white feminism and when we censor black women and black liberation, just so we can try to finish those points out? Because we could, you were breaking up in that and I don't, I don't want to miss that. Yeah, and that was actually done by Mally. So I'm gonna, Mally, if it's okay with you, you articulated it super well. Can you drop that in the chat, the example you brought up? Oh, while we're waiting on that, um, we can move on to people in cages is never the answer. Um, so first is Kaylin and Maddie's group. Whoever is sharing back from that group can start now. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yep. Fantastic. Um, we did the 10th value, uh, never okay to put people in cages. Um, uh, my apologies to the people in the group. I didn't write down the names of the people who said uh, different things. We established the definition um, and we asked ourselves the question, how do we use cages? Um, it started rooted, uh, Kaylin came, uh, brought to light the homeless issue and how criminalized poverty um, and the hard binary between victim and perpetrator um, does not undo the harm. Uh, and then we kind of jumped into a knee jerk reaction, the knee jerk a lot of people have, which is uh, the harder crimes like murder and rape and, uh, Kate and uh, established that cages don't change, but rather reinforce um, violent behavior due to trauma experienced rather than addressing the systematic trauma through the, through the system rather than addressing the issue. Um, we started to discuss, uh, discuss solutions to harm through systematic change. Um, and uh, I think it was Allison who made a great point about if you care about a kid in a cage and if it really, you know, the kid in the cage, if that really gets your heart, what exactly about an adult in a cage are you okay with? I thought that was super smart and um, uh, really quickly to run through it. Sorry, you guys. Uh, the prison system is not only harmful and cruel, but it's been proven over and over again. It just doesn't work. Um, trauma informed environments. And then we started talking about like dismantling and looking at uh, an emotional education, um, dismantling current systems of education and focusing more on an emotional education and how a cage can be a state of mind. Um, we discussed the binary narrative, um, how that's a a false narrative as most binary systems uh, are proven to be false um, when you're not dealing with the spectrum. Um, one, another one of my favorite ideas hold is- on, Hold on one second, hold on one second. You said when not bad. dealing with the spectrum, what? I'm sorry, my bad, I'm rambling uh, to get through it. The binary narrative is a false narrative. The idea, um, going back to the first page, the idea that um, basically the binary narrative between right and wrong, who's deciding who's right and wrong, the victim and the perpetrator, it doesn't undo the harm. And so essentially, until we start looking at systems on a spectrum, rather than one or the other, we're not really gonna get a true vision of um, what can be done with abolitionist thought in the future. Um, abolition is a creative act. Um, how would we envision a world without cages? Um, and then, some of the more positive things we ended on were a curriculum that was based in emotional maturity, mindfulness, investments in social structures to derail potential causes of harm, i.e. like social programs that can deal with what a good relationship looks like, um, or rather the mindset of desperation. I'm sorry, my notes are also, I scribble, I'm so sorry. But that's pretty much um, investing in basic needs and in a comprehensive approach to dealing with things that are issues now because of a broken system before someone goes through a broken system. I hope that wasn't, sorry about that. I hope that wasn't too crazy. But yeah, and uh, it was a lot of fun and everyone in it, well, not fun, I mean, informative and, and very nice conversation. 
Thanks. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, gaining information can be fun. That's cool. That's fun to say. Um, we're going to hear now from uh, Ms. Rosalind's group. Yeah, my name's Mona. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So to add to some of the other comments, um, I'll add more personal stories. Uh, she had us originally start by thinking about walking down your street, just going down your street, your neighborhood, your town, walking through it. And instead of what you're used to seeing, what you see are people living in cages, that every single person on the street is living in a cage. You can see your family is in a cage, your family, your friends, the people you know. Um, what we know for a fact is it's usually the most uh, vulnerable people, the, mo the most uh, marginalized, the people that really are being put into cages where they have no resources to, to fight back. And um, one of the members drew an analogy of living in extreme poverty. You know, you're living in a, a, an area which is, you know, maybe all everyone's renting, but it doesn't seem like there's any way out. You feel very trapped and, and you're trying to, to do things. So you take very risky moves to try just to survive, just to live, and you might end up in true cages of, of uh, prison. And, and we did make a distinction between those two, some more details of the difference, obviously, of not being able to go to the bathroom without behavior, I mean, without uh, someone saying it's okay, or to take a shower. I mean, it's different than living in, a, in an apartment, but um, there are some real analogies of how that feels. In fact, she brought up an example where volunteers um, experienced being in prison for one day, locked up, nothing to do, bored out of their mind to the point that their mind actually starts to break. You start to actually experience trauma for one day in prison and you can't imagine what that might be for people who are locked up for year after year after year. Um, looking at the dream side is when the conversation got much more uh, energized, a lot more people got involved and some of the things that came up is someone was talking about how they had gone to jail um, after a drunk driving accident and, and they had uh, crashed into city property. So it's actually a felony, even though nobody was hurt. They're in jail and it's not a drinking caused problem. It was caused by depression. So maybe if someone was really trying to re rehabilitate, they would give some mental services. He asked for mental services, didn't get them. So the problem persists. And when he comes out of jail as a felon, he has trouble getting a job, trouble, he can't vote, obviously, trouble finding a place to live. So the problem hasn't been resolved. It persists, he ends up back in the same situation. The dream would be whatever you're um, a, accused of or actually have a problem with, instead of prison, locking you up in a building just to shut you away, what are services that can be done to uh, change the underlying problem? So in his case, mental services for the depression, or if someone really was uh, having a problem with drugs or alcohol, services to help get past that, that, that truly helps the person so that they don't have this problem anymore and don't end up back in there. But then um, uh, someone got up there and said, yeah, I agree. A lot of the people really are, are these, they don't belong in prison, but I think all murderers and, 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 uh, and rapists, we, we need prison for that. So then someone pointed out that, well, they had a friend who got involved in, in uh, a gang shooting. And that person absolutely was trying to kill someone, didn't, but was trying to kill someone, but this is someone that they know, and this, this is someone that they would trust with their lives, and they can't, you know, this person is different, so maybe doesn't belong in prison, maybe need, you know, a better path for this uh, person that didn't know better how to behave, so, so maybe murderers don't have to go in there, but definitely, definitely anybody who's a child molester, then somebody else came up and says, hey, that's a label, you may, what? Hey, I'm sorry, I do not mean to cut you off, but we do need to move on. Okay. Could you make one last um, point? Yeah, on that one, it's just that labels are used and people are scared by definition of that label. But if you don't know who the person is, that label might have been applied incorrectly. It might have meaning differently than what um, it was applied to. And again, it's used to scare people into trusting, yes, we need to lock everybody up. Thank you. I believe that is the last group, correct? Awesome. 
Um, thank you everyone for um, participating in the breakouts. Thank you to those folks who shared back. Um, I know you were not given that much time um, to, to give us the main points from your conversation. So um, thank you for doing that, taking that responsibility. Um, me and Talima now want to lead a group conversation um, for not that long, unfortunately, we're going to do it for about five to seven minutes. Um, so I'm going to ask the first question and then if we could put our answers to that question in the chat, that'd be great. If you would really like to speak, you can raise your hand. You can use the raise your hand feature, um, but please, please, please remember to keep your answer short as we are running low on time. So my first question um, out of the um, 10 values that we presented today, um, which value resonates with you the most? So which mass lib value resonates with you the most? You can answer this in the chat or raise your hand um, on the participants feature and I will call on you. Selena says love and rigor. Grace says crime is not equal to harm, love and rigor. Love and rigor again from Nick. DC says crime versus harm. Um, here they come. Aaron Sussman says the system is not broken. It is by design. Maddie says all of us are none of us. Michelle Rose says uh, people close to the problem should lead, so follow the leadership of the directly impacted. Um, and Eva says crime versus harm. Sweet. Um, Talima, would you like to ask the next question? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So what do we find easy about living out these values, right? So if you put love and rigor, what's, what's easy about living out that value for yourself or any of the other values? For me, it's easy to center black liberation, right? That's, that's, that's easy for me. <laughs> what about you guys? And you can drop your, uh, your answers in the chat. Nothing easy about living out these values. I mean, <laughs> it's easy to try other things. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Uh, love and rigor is easy because it's vague. Ooh, Nick, that's a good one. That's kind of almost problematic. Thank People you. are before property. <laughs> It brings each person closer. It's easy to follow. Oops. <laughs> maybe maybe Allison is going to say easy to follow the leadership of those most directly impacted. Right, right, yeah. Centering Black liberation is easy for me. That's what's up. Yes, thanks. Yes, Allison agrees. All of us are none of us. We're all related. And I just extend the way I feel about my family to others. That's a good one. It's easy to love people more than property, building community, all of us or none of us. That's what's up, Emily. I feel you on that. All right, Sean, what about the third question? Bird. The third question is um, the inverse of this question. So what values do we find difficult or challenging? And if you could also name what is difficult or challenging about that value, right? So what values do we find difficult or challenging? And I'm actually going to say love and rigor. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. <laughs> for me. Totally for so me. Does Liz. Liz says the fine balance, right? To trying to figure out um, when to push back um, against someone, right? When to have those uncomfortable conversations and those conflicts, right? And also understanding that conflict does not mean there's a lack of love. Right. Right. Uh, a wise woman named Lola once told me that conflict is not real, right? If we're investing in our relationships, then it isn't conflict. Mm. April says love and rigor feels too easy for white people to lean on this and co-opt your definition. Okay. Um, Allison says crime versus Harm because unlearning decades of being told what to consider a crime takes a lot of work and intentionality. Yes. 
Yes, yes. Most challenging for me, says Nina, is putting people in cages is never the answer because there needs to be an alternative in place. Yes, as of right now, there is not an alternative on a national scale in the least bit. But that's why we're working on it, though. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking at the last question, the last question I'm going to ask you guys for tonight is, is there any way that you already see these values being upheld? Like, see them in practice now? Alana says the system isn't broken. It was designed this way. It seems overwhelming and contrary to what oh, I'm losing it to what we are taught by society. Yes, I see it happening through the movement. Well, they're in action. BLM Metro Phoenix. Who Hannah says mutual aid projects going on right now. Yep. Yes, definitely. I'm part of a susu myself. Um, I see people organizations being more deliberate. Yes, we are walking with intention, y'all. We do this with intention every day, like for real. We're here tonight. Yes, it's definitely not the golden rule. These are really great responses. Mm. And I'm glad that you see the values being put into place every single day. I think that's important for us to realize is that the knowledge is in the is in you guys know what to do. And as long as we're intentional and conscious about how we apply these values daily, this work will be um, that much easier for the rest of us, right? Like we can all depend on each other for that. So Sean, you want to close us out for the night, my man? Good. Sure. <laughs> um, thank you everyone for um, being here tonight with us, as I said in the beginning, um, we had a lot of fun tonight. We had some difficult conversations. Yes, some uncomfortable things were said. Yes, but overall, we really enjoyed this dialogue and this exchange. And we hope that you keep coming back. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is going on right now in the month of August. For those who don't know, it is Black August right now. Blah, 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 blah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, Black August as a whole, right, is a way to commemorate specifically the assassination of George Jackson, who was a revolutionary member of the Black Panther Party and also one third of the Soldad Brothers. Um, he was assassinated in prison during a prison escape. Um, his work is very foundational to prison abolition and police abolition. And this was in um, 1971, I believe. Um, so Black August gets its start there, right? But also in the month of August, there are so many different moments and uh, events of Black resistance from the Haitian Revolution to the Underground Railroad, to Nat Turner's Rebellion, to Bacon's Rebellion, to the Watts Uprising, to the March on Washington, um, to the um, Black Lives Matter movement, um, really taking over the streets of Ferguson, right? All of these things happen in August. Um, so that is why Black August is a thing. Um, Black August AZ is a series of free and online in-person events that are open to the public and designed to lift up stories of Black liberation leaders and promote solidarity between Black and Latinx communities and root participants in tangible steps toward abolition of prisons and police in Arizona. So what, we, what you are at right now, if you do not know, is a part of Black August. This is one of the um, free and open to the public education sessions where we are talking about abolition and working towards the goals of abolishing prison and police and giving folks tangible things that they can do. Um, we have a bunch of other things coming down uh, the pipe this month. So on August 25th, along with Transquare Pueblo, we'll be having a conversation on Blackness, Indigeneity, and Latinx identities. Um, also, um, for all white identifying people, you can go to our Addressing Whiteness Black August uh, conversations that are happening each Monday of um, August, so the, so the 24th will be the next one. Um, there's actually gonna be a march um, with one of our partners, Poder, on the 26th to memorialize those killed by Phoenix PD. Um, as this was plugged earlier, Joe Larios of Mass Lib, what up Joe? 
um, People Over Property, Resegregation and Light Rail is happening on August 27th, which will be a community dialogue centered on race, South Phoenix, and the light rail. That is definitely one that I suggest you show up to. If you like Let's Talk Abolition, then I think you will really, really love resegregation and light rail. In closing, the last few days of our week of solidarity, we're gonna have a Black Friday fundraiser, which is focused on culture, art, healing, and joy. We're going to have um, hosts from Transqueer Pueblo, also um, someone very dear to my heart, um, a drag queen named Twix, queen of our hearts and your wallets will be co-hosting. Twix is my cousin, shout out Twix. Um, we'll have performances uh, by local um, artists and local drag queens. On Saturday, there's going to be a, another artist showcase through Palabras Bilingual Bookstore, Saturday, August 29th. And then lastly, Sunday, August 30th, there's a community art event, San Jarocho, which is a re regional folk music from Veracruz, Mexico. Um, Transcore Pueblo will be putting on a workshop on Sunday, August 30th. Hey, Nick knows Twix, yay. Hey, that's what's up, Nick. Well, we hope to see you there, Nick, then. Yes. Um, so I ran through that real quick, but as you can see on your screen, there's some things I even did not mention. So like tomorrow, you can show, you can, um, show up for BLM at the Speak Your Peace open mic. I will be there. I um, hope to see you there if you decide to come. On the 23rd, BLM is having an underground seminar. I believe that's um, uh, a learning opportunity, an educational opportunity. I'm not sure exactly what they will be discussing, but you can follow them at BLM Phoenix Metro if you do not already and get the information on that. And I think that finally does conclude all of the events <laughs> in Black August. It's popping, y'all. If you do not follow us on social media, you really, really should. Um, you'll get all of these updates much, much quicker. Um, and you'll be able to find out exactly when we are doing something and where. Most likely it will be online if it is mass lib. Uh, most of our events are online right now as you know the dangers of COVID-19. Uh, but yes, can we put up um, via our social media page? Is that possible to screen share that right now? Boom, look. Yes. Look. All right. So these are all of our social medias um, and our email. Um, I suggest you just take a screenshot of this if you can, if you need this information. Um, also, at the bottom is our donation link. Please, please, please donate. Um, any amount helps. Uh, we are a nonprofit, yes, but we get all of our money from donations and fundraising. So the money that you donate will literally go into either helping us continue this work, helping us get a check so that we can continue this work, helping us book an artist, helping us get a new piece of technology, whatever we need so that we can continue to be um, a service to you all and that we can continue to be an anchor of the abolition movement here in Phoenix. Um, yes. I think that is all that I have. Please do not leave just yet. I want to make sure that no one else on the Mass Lib team has anything to say. And then I have a way that I want us to exit the space. So um, Mass Lib staff, core planning team, is there anything you would like to add or further highlight? Um, really quick, I've, I've gotten a couple of private messages I really can't like go through the chat and find all those messages. So just add me on Facebook or Instagram. It's Talima and you know, we can have those conversations for sure. I'm really super interested in connecting with everyone, but thank you all for coming and thank you for being here. Um, Patricia, Roslyn, Rhea, anyone say anything? I want to say thank you to Kaylin, Gabe, Nicole, Jamar, Sean, Rosalyn, um, everybody who held down a breakout room. Thank you so much for all of your work. And thank you, everyone, for including to those breakout rooms, having these tough conversations.
questions is how we are going to continue to grow our analysis and make abolition a reality. Thank you everyone for being here. We'll see you next time. Yes. Oh, and before folks leave, there is a ending poll. Oh, yes. Get that ending poll. And I want to shout out to Maddie also, who moved across the country and still came to us to help out tonight. Thank you, Maddie. Woo, woo. Yo, and but Patricia, though, like, you the best. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, girl. <laughs> love you more. Thank you, Liz. Good night, everybody. Thank you. And Mass Lib Core Planners, if you want to stay on so we can debrief real quick and if you don't want to, <laughs> that's okay. We'll talk to you soon.